So today what we're going to look at is how to install VMware tools on a non-VMware virtual machine. Um, so bear with me, this is a uh, voiceover of the recording and uh, we're going to try to make it sync up. But, uh, so what we're starting with here is a virtual machine on Hyper-V that does not have VMware tools on it. Um, I'm going to go in here in a second and show you what is installed on it. Uh, the, only, the only thing that's installed is basically a 7-zip and uh, the Microsoft Orca tool. Um, that's going to help us out later on in the video, but for now, uh, just know that VMware Tools is not installed on this guy. Um, and uh, the, the goal by the end of the video is to have it installed on this VM so that we can then use Zerto to do a move of the virtual machine from a Hyper-V server onto a VMware server. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is we need to get VMware Tools. Um, you can grab the ISO off an ESX host uh, or, you know, whatever. The, the easiest way that I've found to do it, though, is just to get yourself a, uh, a, a VMware virtual machine that's on your VMware hypervisor that you're planning to go to anyway. Uh, you might need to spin up a VM that doesn't have tools or something on it, but um, basically you just need a VM that you can tell VMware to go ahead and install VMware tools. That will mount the virtual ISO file uh, to the VM. So that's what I have here. My ZVM doesn't have VMware tools on it yet. Uh, so I went ahead and told it to uh, install VMware tools. And now what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to uh, go into just my computer after uh, it gets mounted up. And we're going to be able to browse the, the DVD with VMware tools on it. And then I can grab the installation files for VMware tools. Um, while you're in here, while you got this guy mounted up, you might as well grab both the 32 and the 64-bit version of VMware tools. Uh, you may only need one or the other, but at least then you won't have to do this process again later on down the road. Uh, so the setup64 and the setup.exe, those are the two files you want. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab them, I'm going to put them on the desktop of my Zerto Virtual Manager, and uh, then what I can do in a little bit here is I'll remote from my uh, Hyper-V VM to my ZVM server and grab them over the network. Uh, so that's how I'm getting VMware tools from VMware onto this non-VMware VM. Uh, at least the installation files is just, let's go over the network, grab them off my desktop, paste them onto the desktop here. Uh, so once I have them on this machine that also has Orca on it, uh, then what I can do is I can actually go ahead and run the exe file, which will extract the exe, and in my temporary directory, what I'm going to find is the MSI file, and that's actually what I'm interested in, um, because the exe we can't really do much with, but the MSI file, we can go in and uh, edit that. So if I run setup64, just to show you, it is going to break. It says, hey, this is not a virtual machine uh, because there's no VMware hardware. Therefore, I don't know what to do. Uh, so before you close this, though, what you would do is then go down to, you know, file manager, file explorer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, open up your C drive. And uh, then what we can do is find the temporary directory. Easiest way to do it is percent sign capital T E M P percent sign. Uh, and that'll take us right to where we need to go. There's a folder in there called something with a setup at the end. Click on that and there's the files we want. So there's that MSI file. You might as well grab the, uh, the, the visual studios C plus plus redistribution stuff too. Um, but you know, make sure you get that MSI. That's what VMware tools is. The other stuff just helps out. Uh, so copy that, put a folder on your desktop called VMware Tools 64, paste the MSI in there and, uh, and the v Visual Studios, and then we're going to work with it from this folder. So now what you can do is you can go back into that VMware Tools that you were installing that says it was broke, hit finish. That'll clean up all the temporary files, get rid of them for us. And then what we can do is we can right click on our MSI file and we can tell it that we want to uh, edit it with Orca. Uh, the other thing you can do is just go down to start and actually run Orca from the start menu. And then inside of there, you just open um, the setup 64-bit uh, uh, MSI file. Uh, doesn't really matter which way you do it. But anyway, let's uh, 
click on that guy. <coughs> uh, or, like I said, you can right click and uh, just edit the MSI. So what we're looking for once we get into the MSI file is a line in the database that says VM check requirements. Um, so again, I'm doing a voiceover. So I'm showing you that the MSI doesn't work, even though we've extracted it from the EXE, still doesn't work. Um, so right click, edit with Orca. That'll bring up basically this huge database of everything the MSI needs to do. First thing in the left menu, find the installation UI sequence, click on it. On the right side, look for VM underscore check requirements, right click on that, and then hit um, basically delete row or drop row, hit OK, and that removes the check completely. So hit save, exit Orca, run the MSI again, and voila, uh, there is no more VMware check, and VMware tools will successfully install on any virtual machine you want. Uh, basically, at this point, it's just adding in files, uh, Windows update type drivers and things into the Windows installation, and it'll it'll work fine. So we'll uh, I'll I'll go ahead and let this run here. Uh, it just takes it a few minutes, um, and then once it's done, we won't actually restart because uh, if you're gonna do a move with Zerto, Zerto is gonna restart the VM at some point anyway. So you don't really need to incur two downtimes just to install VMware tools. You can just hit finish here. When it asks you, hey, do you want to reboot? Just say no. Uh, we don't need these drivers yet, so there's no real reason to restart. And again, um, this process will work even if you're not using Zerto. Um, it's just that I work for Zerto and that's why we're doing this here is so that we can essentially uh, easily move these between hypervisors, whether it's, whether it's VMware, Hyper-V, uh, AWS, Azure, whatever. Um, so now that we've got that installed, uh, I'm going to come back into Zerto, and I'll go ahead and set up a VPG to replicate this guy uh, from Hyper-V to VMware. Uh, so I don't even remember what I called it, but it's probably pretty original, like Hyper-V to VMware. Um, we'll go in, select the VM that I need to replicate. That guy right there. That's the VM that we just installed VMware tools on. That's sitting in uh, Hyper-V. I'm going to go ahead and select my VMware uh, Site 1. That's just VMware vSphere 6.0. That's actually the site that I got my VMware tools from. Uh, now I'm just going in and selecting a data store, clusters, set my RPO, all that good stuff. Um, don't really care about any of that. Need to set some networking, so connect it to my VM network, put it in that folder, etc. Um, now, to, to make sure that everybody knows that the IP change is working, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to set a static IP. So that way when it lands on my VMware site, we know that the tools are working because uh, Zerto can't change the IP address in a VM unless VMware tools is working, unless Hyper-V integration services are working. So essentially, when I do the move, if I get 172.16.1.44 out of the box, uh, or if you just look for the Google DNS servers, uh, when it comes up, then we know that VMware Tools is working and everything's happy. So we'll go ahead and uh, let this start replicating here. If I remember right, I do fast forward a little bit through this. It is a pretty short virtual, or a pretty small virtual machine, um, but we're not really here to, you know, test Zerto and show you how fast that works. So went ahead and fast forwarded through the initial sync. As you can see, it did only take like, what, five minutes, 10 minutes anyway. Um, actually, it looks like six minutes. So anyway, let's do a live failover. Uh, so we throw Zerto into live failover mode. We can also use the move function. Uh, move's probably a little safer, so. I guess we can go ahead and use that. <coughs> um, so go ahead and click move. And once we do that, 
uh, we can go in and select the VPG, the Hyper-V to VMware Migration VPG. Um, hit Next. And then really all we need to do is tell it whether, you know, hey, do you want to do reverse protection? Yes. Auto commit, I always change to none or to auto commit, auto rollback after like 60 minutes or something. Um, you know, you can tell it before shutdown, all that stuff if you need to, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, so go ahead and just go ahead and hit start move. And um, again, the commit policy, I've got articles on that of why. And actually in Zerto 6.0, um, we've changed the default to be auto commit after 60 minutes just to uh, kind of save some headache. So um, the product has changed to just do that automatically. Anyway, let's hit OK. And um, it'll take Zerto just a minute or two to move it. Uh, we'll see it pop up into my VMware inventory here in just a minute. <coughs> Should be popping up. It's somewhere between Docker and and uh, yeah, the Linux test machine. There he is. So again, just takes it a, a few seconds here. Uh, basically, we're moving some disks around, doing some reconfiguration of the virtual machine, making sure all the specs are right. And uh, once all that is, then we'll go ahead and hit the the power on button. All right, there comes the power on. Um, so if we were just to sit here, we'll eventually see that VMware tool starts running, but we'll go ahead and uh, open up the console. It should uh, basically come up and um, once I log in, we'll be able to see that you know it does have the right IP address and everything. Uh, sometimes on the first boot, it will show you this getting ready. Sometimes you also see some Windows updates, like applying updates and things. Uh, if it if it hasn't been rebooted in a while, sometimes you'll see stuff like that. Um, you know, just typical maintenance stuff that kind of pops its head up because it was a reboot. So, so once uh, once the the login screen pops here, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And then I'll navigate down to the network settings and show you the uh, the static IP address. Um, the reason it just rebooted there was because basically Zerto set the IP address. Uh, so Zerto was successfully able to communicate with VMware tools. That's why it's able to command that reboot. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll log in. can type the password right and then if we come down uh, you know you can hit yes no there whatever you want uh, we'll come down right click on here go on into the, the properties and we're looking for 172 16 144 and there it is so again migration from Hyper-V or Azure to VMware um, makes it super easy if you can pre-install VMware tools then there's no user interaction later on thanks have a great one